Hello and welcome to the third episode of the New South Wales Cup Team of the Decade Journey. My name's Brad Preston. I'm joined by former Rugby League Week journalist and current Newtown Jets media man, Steve Russo. How are you, Steve? Oh, g'day, Brad. Nice to see you again. Not too, ba- um, not too bad, Steve. We- we've just jumped off a, a massive phone call with uh, former Knights and Hull Kingston Rovers winger and also Wang Roos winger Josh Manolato. We had a massive interview with him. We're not going to waste your time tonight. We're not going to go into a big jibber. We're just going to roll the interview with him, and hopefully you enjoy it because he's got some great yarns from a guy that's played, you know, debuted in the NRL, played Super League, played in the biggest game, you know, at a Challenge Cup final, and played in Hull Derbies, which is something I never knew about, but how big they are. You know, came back and he's playing, played back at what Wild. What about what he helped the mighty Azuri to a Mate, one point that's, win over? See, that's... Um, that's something I looked and I did my initial I did my initial notes and then I went because hang on there was a time then Italy beat England I'm sure he was there and I rang watch back watch the thing and he kicks the actual field goal and he said in the interview we won't we won't ruin it too much but he said that was his only field goal he's ever kicked he put it through the sticks and kicked it out of the stadium right between was it Chris Hill and James Graham so that sort of stuff you know and that's sort of the stuff that we're all about a guy that. Won't be on your Matty John shows, but has got so many good stories that you know we want you guys to hear. So we're going to roll the tape. Steve, thanks for joining us again. But here's Josh Manolato's video uh, interview. Sorry. We now welcome Josh Manolato, another special guest to the podcast. I'll read out his repertoire. He was a three-time New South Wales Cup to- top point scorer, a three-time New South Wales Cup team of the year member. He was selected in the residence twice. Played two games for the Knights in the NRL, 44 games for Hull KR, and 10 games for Italy where he played internationals and in the 2013 and 2017 rugby league world cups josh welcome to the podcast thanks for having me mate thanks for spending your time steve's with us as always mate we'll dive straight into a bit of international flavor before we we, we dive back into new, your new south Wales cup career and your and your super league and nrl careers 2010 your international debut for italy tell us all about it yeah i um i was playing local footy at wyong in the newcastle competition and um it was it was really random uh paul franze i was playing against him one day and you know after the game he pulled me aside and asked me if i was italian i said oh yeah i am obviously because of the last name and (laughs) he he then forwarded uh my name onto the italian coach because he was in contact with him and pretty much six eight weeks later i was on a plane uh out to italy and Wales for a random uh, tour because we're going to play Wales for in a couple of test matches. So I didn't know anyone on the tour. I didn't know any of the other players, but you know it was it was four weeks where um, yeah it it was all it was all really weird. You know all these other players coming in from under twenties and New South Wales Cup. You know wearing their Paramount Eels outfits or the Tigers outfits, and here I am in my long roos outfits. <laughs> so, you know, does anyone want to swap swap training gear and yeah, leave? Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah, no good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was um, that was pretty pretty special moment, you know, co- considering I was only playing local footy. Yeah, start of a, a burgeoning uh, international career, but we'll go early career while you're playing at Warong. So you said 2006 to 2011, you're playing in the real NRL, which I love. It's the great, greatest name ever, Newcastle Rugby <laughs> League. So 2012 or pre-2012, you and your, your good friend Mitch Williams decide to take up a chance with the Knights and trial for the New South Wales Cup side under Rip Taylor. Yeah. Um, how was that decided? Was that a group like you two have a chat together? Did you just, you know, we've got to give it a run. I'm sort of not sick of playing Newcastle Rugby League, but, you know, I want to try and go a bit higher. Um, looking back on it, I, I can't really put my finger on like, yep, yeah, I'm making this decision right now. It was kind of like the time is right. I felt comfortable with going, okay. Um, you know, I spent the last say five to six years in local footy and especially the last two, I was making rep teams, the country team, um, and, and obviously playing a little bit of, um, international footy as well, getting my confidence up. Um, you know, it was only uh, pretty much natural for me to, to move up into New South Wales Cup, you know, give it a crack up there. I knew Rip Taylor, the coach, Ian Burke, who was the assistant coach. Good man, Burkey, yeah. Yeah, so he was actually in contact with me 
um, when I was overseas in the 2011 uh, World Cup qualifiers. Yep. You know, I was just um, talking to me via text, asking me if, if I'd be interested to come up for a, uh, you know, pre-season training and all that kind of stuff. So I said, yeah, why not? Uh, Mitch Williams was on board and Bodie O'Connell was on board as well. So, um, you know, we just pretty much did a summer of um, pre-season up there and, yep. you know, we didn't really look back. We were just always looking forward to the next the next training session and then the next trial game and then, you know, comp starts yeah. Can I just jump in here? Had yeah. you played any kind of junior reps for a club, or had you ever been in a in a in a kind of pathways uh, system for a New South Wales or NRL club at all? No, I I, I never played mats or um, jersey flag or you know um, anything like that. So uh, you know, playing cup at twenty five was my first taste of being in a NRL system, I guess. Yes. Yeah. So you do the the big drive for that 2012 from the Central Coast where you are. I'm not sure if you're still there, but that's where you were driving up with Mitch. He says yep. the car journeys were pretty tough with you. Something about Toto Africa apparently is your favourite song. I don't know if that hits home, but that's what he told oh. me to ask you. So can you elaborate yeah. on that a little bit? Yeah. Well, you know, Mitch and I we spent what, four four nights a week. You know, hour there, hour back. <laughs> Just the two of us. Yeah, you, know, you get to you get to know someone pretty quite intimately. Yeah, pretty intimately. <laughs> you spend that much time with someone. <laughs> is there ever is there any times you drive back in silence? Like I remember, I had a good friend of mine who used to work with us, Jamie. I'm sure you remember. We used to drive to uni and back. And it was three hours to Canberra and stuff. And he loved to chat, and I could just sit there and listen to him because it was <laughs> the world's it was the world's boringest drive, Sydney to Canberra. So yeah, he'd sit there and talk for three hours. Who was the dominant chatter? Oh. Uh, I think we both we both gave as yeah. much as yeah, um, but you know obviously I made sure the iPod was always plugged <laughs> in when it was my turn to drive. Yeah, love my music and you know you mentioned Toto Africa. It's, it's oh, it's easily, a great song. It's easily one of the all time greats. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, no, that was it was good times. I actually enjoyed that year. That was one of my favourite years. Oh, yeah. can I just jump in again? Yeah, I mean, good. another thing you've signed, like, and it's a bit of a cliche statement, a lot of players who come up from 20s New South Wales Cup always say they notice a big dip jump in the quality of the uh, quality of the play and they find it difficult to adapt. How did you find that jump from local Newcastle footy to New South Wales Cup? Was it difficult? Was there a difference in pace? What, what were you finding at that point? Um, to be honest, I didn't find it uh, that difficult. We, we, we did get flogged in pre-season for a good four months you know um it put us in good stead for that but i think i think local footy was tougher and more physical going into new south wales cup was more skillful and more game plan orientated you know that sort of sort of style of play so you know like local footy you know if you're taking if you're a winger taking a hit up in the middle of the field you yeah, I expect to get bashed. You get a target on your back. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not going to be hit, stick, wrestle, slow to the ground. It's going to be, you know, shoulders, head, <laughs> anything, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't find the transition to be too too difficult, which was a good thing. And also because I was I was 25 uh, as well, so I I suppose you could say I was a bit seasoned with a local footy. So, um, yeah, made made the transition quite easy. So we'll roll into 2013. We've, we've, we've had a chat to Mitch about your, your final series there where you, you finished one short win of a minor premise. This is 2012. Yeah. You lose to Bowman Road Eastwood in the prelim final. I think it was just by two, wasn't it? It was really close from memory. Yeah. This is 2012, so we haven't jumped into 2013 yet. But. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that game... It really, really bothers me because after about 30 minutes, it was six all, mm. and I take a hit up, and I get smacked in a uh, in a tackle, and I break my arm. Oh. So I'm laying there on the ground, going, "Oh fuck, you know this is it, season over, grand finals next week." Yeah. You know, and I get taken off the hospital, hos- hospital, and um, you know, I I got the message when I was in hospital that we lost. You know, we, we had a really good team that year. Um, yeah. I think we finished third 
mm. regular season. Yeah, yeah, you won win. I think you were third, but you were still one win. I think, and you, I can't remember your four and against off the top of my head, but I think it was pretty good. So yeah, yeah, we beat the Bears week one. Yeah, and and they were a pretty good side too. And mm. um, but yeah, that that semi final, you know, top, Bellman were eighth, I think. Yeah, yeah, they came from eighth. Yeah, they just. They, they really turned it on that day. Their, their goal kicker was kicking them from everywhere. and Unfortunately, I, I finished it up in hospital. Yeah, all right. So we're all in the 2013. You stay in Newcastle. Obviously, would have been a tough-ish decision with you personally, with, with Mitch saying he's going to go back and play for Wyong. Was that, were you staying there because you're a full-time contracted player at the Knights with then, or were you staying on a second-tier role? I, um, I was staying on... Because I got the the summer contract yep. uh, opportunity, um, it wasn't a second tier. It was probably below that. Okay. Again. Yeah. Yeah. So as soon as we got to Christmas, um, I was back to the afternoon training sessions three nights a week. Yep. So um, yeah, I I stayed in Newcastle to see that through. You know to. to jump up there with the big boys and and see how I went. Um, you know, the training was something else. You know, <laughs> I, obviously I hadn't experienced anything like that before. But, you know, at the end of some drills, you, you know, you think you're going to shit yourself. Your, your body's <laughs> going to shut down. It was it was pretty intense, but it was – I really enjoyed it. You know, I, I didn't – I kept it to myself. I was pretty quiet. I just did what I had to do and um, – you know, I think I tried to make good impressions with my actions on the training paddock. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that decision obviously was tough and obviously the precedent was hard, but you're, you're uh, rewarded with your NRL debut by Coach Wayne Bennett in uh, round 12 against South Sydney. I think it was at ANZ Stadium, was it not? Yeah. 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 So walk, walk us through how it all happened. When did Wayne tell you, you know, he's a, he's a master... Uh, I was going to say master debater, but that sounds bad. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, <laughs> he's a master. He's a master coach. But how did he manage that excitement with you? You know, like when did he tell you? Uh, you know, how was the warm up and after the game and all that sort of stuff? Yeah. So it, it was pretty weird because I think it was would have been Tuesday. I was at work and I got a text message off um, Scott Baker. Sorry, Scott Barker. Yep. And um. He's Wayne Bennett's right hand man, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and is he the um, stats guy? Is he yeah, stat yeah, but he's but he was Wayne's right hand man throughout his. He's working at the NRL now. Yeah, I've, I've oh, is he? a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's he's in like the footy analytics department. He's a very very smart man, very, very footy very analytical man. But he's uh, very intelligent. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. So he um he got in touch with me asking me if I could come to training on the Wednesday morning for um with the NRL squad because I was just a normal Arvo shift, you know, with the with the cup squad, so I'm thinking, oh yeah, that must be down a couple of troops. So I'll go in on the Wednesday and um, do the training session, just fill in here and there, and um, and then at the end of that session, he asked me again if I can come back for cup and John on Friday. I'm thinking, oh, okay, yeah, sweet, no worries, you know, I can work around it. Um, so I'll go in Friday, and before we go on to the field, we had video, like we split off into middles, left and right video sessions. So I get pushed into the the right where to cover for Uate because there's an injury cloud over him. Yep. And, um, you know, in the video session, um, Crawley, he's, he's the assistant coach. He was sort of looking at me, talking to me while he was talking about wing play and I was I was sort of looking over my shoulder just <laughs> to see who was around because I was like, because I hadn't been told I was in. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I'm just thinking, this is weird. <laughs> okay, yeah, right, okay. Um, get out on the field and, you know, I'm just swapping in with, like, the young Matautia Chanel and Peter and, you know, we're just swapping in for Uate every now and then. And then the, um, as soon as Captain John was wrapped up, I was about to go do some goal kicking with... Um, with Gidley, I think. And um, Wayne just comes over, his hands in his pockets, and he just goes, um, Josh, you're in for tomorrow. <laughs> Go home, pack your bag. <laughs> I said, and then that was it. He just walked off. I was like, oh, sweet, okay. 
in my head I'm fucking flipping out. Um, <laughs> but I'm just yeah, yeah. Con- controlling my experience. Yeah, poker face um, is on. Yeah, I go, yeah, sweet. And he goes, oh, and you'll be kicking as well. Like, cool. <laughs> cool. Yeah, done. No dramas. So I'm shaking it off because the boys are leaving that afternoon to head down to Sydney on the bus. So I had to I had to go back down the, the freeway, pack my bag, and then meet them at the interchange um, when they come through with my bus to pick me up. Mm. So I, I hang around just to do some goal kicking, and um, there was a bit of media there to do that too. So after that was all done, come home, pack my bag for the night, and go meet up with the boys on the freeway and head down to Sydney. All right, so you, you score, you try. I can't remember off the top of my head when it was. Uh, who, I can't remember who throws you the ball. Um, Kevin Nagama. Yeah, Kevin Nagama. Another New South Wales Cup man, legend. Um, yeah. So you score. What, what were the feelings going through your mind as you're diving over to score your first meat pie in the NRL in your first game? Oh, it was um, It was really weird. I could, I could see the back line play because it was a really, really big back line yeah, play that we yeah, did. Yeah, it was. Yeah, big sweeping movement to the right. Yeah, and I could I could see with every pass, like it was on, it was on, like every pass was perfect. And when when Kev he, he did a miss ball straight out to me, as soon as I caught, I looked up. There was no one in front of me. Like the wing, <laughs> the wing had jammed, and I just had ten meters just to myself. And yeah, I, oh, my head was about about to explode. I just wanted to make sure I I I was scoring at the correct line. Yeah. But not, <laughs> Not yeah. one too far. Yeah, or one, one too, too short. Diving over on the ten meter line. So it's making sure out the peripheral, the corner <laughs> post is out. Come sweet. All right, there's the cameras. All right, yeah, I'm, I'm not too far. Yeah, it was. No, it was good. Um, yeah, dream moment. Like that was. Did you slot oh, the goal? Yeah, yeah, Steve. Yeah. Did you slot the goal Cut after? Out by Kev. Yeah, yeah. Kevy could play, oh, mate. Don't worry about Kevy. Ke- Cut Kev- out from Kevy. Yeah, it was. It was a silky ball. Um, That's a non-preferred side too, is it? Yeah, it was. Left to right, it's a bit hard to yeah, throw that long ball. Yeah, um, yeah, it was a yeah good pass. But um, yeah, did you slot I, the goal? Slot the goal. Sideline. Could have hundred percent. Yeah, yeah I know. Oh, I just wanted to hear him <laughs> say it, mate. I just wanted to hear him say it. Um, yeah, it's up. Uh, it was a. It was probably one of the, my, my best goals because every time I score a try, I never convert it. <laughs> it's some weird thing. Like we could score eight tries, I'll score two of them, but I only kick the six goals. Um, but yeah, that, that goal though, um, I pushed it so far to the right, mm. as soon as it left my boot, I went, fuck, <laughs> but it, it had the, had the bend on it, like really, really big swirl on it and it came, came snuck back. back in and yeah. yeah, it was easily one of the best ones I've ever kicked. I was about to say, um, like I know you lost the game obviously, but that's a very good Newcastle side you've actually been called up to, they they were one game away from the grand final. I seem to remember that year. In yeah, first grade. yeah, they were, they, were, they were pretty um pretty good that year. Like our our forward pack was huge. Like we had Cade Snowden, Willie Mason, and then Danny Badiris, back row of Houston, Bo Scott, Jeremy Smith. Like they were just bashing blokes. Yeah, one you know, player I'd not like to play against, Jeremy Smith. <laughs> Or Bo Scott. No Bo Scott way. scared the shit out of me. Mate, he scares <laughs> me in the offices. He does stuff in the NRL. He walks down the thing and he, you look, smile at him, hey, mate, and then he just uh, looks at you like he wants to, wants to hurt you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Save me alone, mate. He's a, he's a good fella, but like yeah. away from it all. Um, but yeah, on the field, like even at training, when he was pressuring halves and all that, and when they were about to kick a ball, like it was. Still whack him. Yeah, like, get ready. <laughs> Get ready. What about post match? Uh, Did Wayne have a chat to you after it, or is he just? Um, yeah, he, he came up and he said, "I, um, I, I did good." In his words, I think. So, yeah, bit of Jack Gibson there. Yeah, yeah, he did good. So. Um, did you shake his hand? Isn't he like really weird with his handshakes? Isn't there one something? I know that the Rabbitohs now they only get one handshake a week, and they all yeah. try and trick him to get one more. Was that still rolling <laughs> around there? Yeah, he, he um. Like, obviously, the first time you meet him, you'll shake your hand. Mm. But then from then on, it's hands in the pockets. There you go. <laughs> it's – it's because I, I kind of understand with that because now I'm still playing. Like, coming back to Wyong, it was all, like, 
every training session, everyone's shaking their hands. Oh, I'm like, yeah, mate. Even I'm a bit over it now. Like, yeah. Um, but, but, yeah, Wayne was a bit, you know, introduce yourself, shake your hand, and and maybe even congratulate you on something. But, um, yeah, very rarely you got a handshake. I'm not a so, kisser. You know how they kiss? You know people kiss and like you know people, family, even friends. Yeah. They come up and kiss you. People's girlfriends on the side of the cheek. A, I don't know how to do it because we have Italian rel- relatives too, and I don't know which side to go first. And I stuff it up all the time. So now I just go, yeah, hey, and I just I'm not a kisser. Like people do it. Oh. I just go. I literally come out now going, not a kisser. Nah, I don't. I'm do pretty it. sure there was an episode of Seinfeld about this. Is there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's called the Probably. kiss alone. I've, I've, yeah. um, <laughs> I've got the DVDs of the ten seasons. I never started it because once I start a show, I'm locked in. Like, I can't, so I have to, if I start it, and I'll just, one day when I don't have two kids running around at the bottom of my feet, I'll watch, sit down and watch 10 seasons or whatever it is, but I can't start it until. So, you pay, a, go, 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 Josh. I was going to say, I'm a big kisser. Like if You I'm are? Well, someone, it's your Italian, I, mate. This exactly. is, this is oh, well, magnifico. You know, this is what you I do. Kiss. I can't yeah. do it. I don't know what to do, mate. I don't, like, do you actually kiss or do you just... Put your cheek next to them. Do you? I don't yeah, make, and, then, and then you make the noise like a. Yeah. So yeah. you don't put the. You don't actually kiss. You just put the cheek next to it and kiss. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You just yeah. Start to lean in. It's like yeah, a kind yeah. of. It's like you get a headbutt them, but you go to the side. Well, which yeah. side do you go first? Do you go left cheek first, then right? Doesn't cheek? matter. As far as I know, you just do whatever. It's whatever they offer you first. Okay. Yeah. I'm still whatever not going to do it. Whatever you're you you approaching. <laughs> no, that's it's all about the approach because like it depends which hand you're going in with first, and then it's that way, or if it's this arm, it's this way. No, I can't science. do it. It wigs me out, mate. It wigs me out too hard. So you Josh, play. Tell me a bit, yeah, a bit, a bit. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you again. No, no, mate, go, go. Tell me a bit about your Italian heritage as a fellow semi-Italian. <laughs> tell me. I'd love to know about your your story uh, in regards to your background. So um, my my grandparents on my dad's side they were Italian. Um, you know, they both passed away unfortunately, but I remember being at their house. Um, so uh, my nono, my granddad, he um, like they love concrete. They love building their own. <laughs> Isn't that Greeks? Things. Don't Greeks love their concrete no, too? That's both. Oh, is it both? Because uh, right, I got I got a bit of Greek in me. One sixteen. So. <laughs> he was a concreter too. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, like if there's if there's a bit of space under the house, oh, we'll dig that out. We'll we'll cement it all. Make it a little um, oh, what do you call it? Um, Where they make limoncello. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh, what's the name of a, a room underneath your house? Oh, basement. Basement. Basement, but there's like another one. Another... Uh, a bunker? <laughs> nah, no, I, I, know, I, know, I, yeah, I know the word you say. I just can't think of it either. Yeah. Um, cellar. Yeah, cellar. cellar. Yeah, okay. So um, when it's time to to make the uh, the home brew, <laughs> you know, he's got, the, he's got the big tub, all the grapes in there, and he tried to get me in there one day stomping grapes, but... <laughs> I felt gross in between my toes. I was only a kid, but yeah. I wish I did that sort of stuff like now. Mm. Yeah, he made his own moonshine. Where in Italy were they from, your uh, your grandparents? Uh, up north near Venice called Portenone. Um, it's about an hour away from Venice. Um, but they came over late 50s, early 60s. Yeah, similar to my grandparents. Yeah, my grandparents... Like, they're Ted Orney, they're, they're Southerners. They came, I think my grandfather came in 51 and my grandmother came in like 52 or something, 53. So yeah. a very similar situation, except. Yeah. It's were, crazy how they came like a year or two apart. Mm. Yeah. Like, well, that's a um, perfect segue into the 2013 World Cup where in the lead up, I do remember this because I, I, I covered a bit of it, you kicking the winning field goal in a 15-14 upset <sighs> win over England in Southford. Tell us yeah. about how it played out. <coughs> like, what was what were the scenes post match? You know, how much did the ripple oh, effect go through? Like, you know, Italy and stuff like that. Like, it's big, mate. Italy beating England, no matter what game it is. Yeah, like to be fair, leading into that game, we were just hoping not to get murdered, um, which was kind of, you know, we're, we're underselling ourselves a bit. Well, I was, um, you know, but looking back, we had a solid team. You know, a really good team. Um, it was pouring wet, so it sort of brought brought the game down a bit, but it was more of a level playing field. And, and they had a huge squad. Burgess, James Graham, Ryan Hall, you know, all these sorts of blokes. And um, we, we went into half time. I think we're up 
12, 10 or 12, 6 maybe. And we're thinking, geez, this is good. So in the second half, we, we put, our, like, put on our second string team. So we, we pulled off the Minicellos, Tedesco. We pulled off Vaughny, the Frankie, all those blokes to let the other squad members go through and have a game. Mm. And then as the clock's ticking down, we're getting closer and closer to the end and we kick a penalty with about 10 minutes to go. And then, because I'm sitting on the bench, and with about three minutes to go, our fullback gets a cramp. Might have been Tedesco, maybe. Yep. So he comes off and I go on. Um, we do a clearing kick down to their end and their winger knocks on um, 10 metres out. And it's two minutes to go on the clock. I'm thinking, oh, we could probably sneak a field goal here. So I'm playing fullback and I'm just basically telling blokes where to go. Mind you, I've never kicked a field goal in my life. <laughs> I've never attempted to kick a field goal in my life. And I haven't since. So I'm going to rest. I'm going to stick with this one. So full tackle it just comes to me and I just I just drop it and go. And I, I split, you know, James Graham and Chris Hill who were screaming at me. I go right between the two of them and it goes through and we win 15-14 in the sheds afterwards. We've got the beer and it's just, <laughs> it's going everywhere. And then for the next 48 hours, it's a blur. Honestly, it was the biggest party. <laughs> we've ever had yeah. out in Leeds yeah. um, you know Anthony Minichelli has got the hookups you know there's a couple of locals and yeah. we're going to this club we'll go here and, um, yeah it was it was awesome it was, that that whole weekend was just something ridiculous and how did you have a beer with the England blokes after the game or were they just devo no we we sort of like we were, we were probably too concerned with ourselves to be fair <laughs> Um, and I think I think they copped it in the media over there oh. after losing that game. Oh, just quite. Matt Lamar absolutely gave it to them after the game. I'm just looking at reading the match report now. He was he was spewing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, after that game, maybe James Graham got stood down after for the first match, maybe um, for something, but. Yeah, apparently they, they copped it big time. Oh, well, Who was your coach, Carlo Napolitano? Yeah, yeah. Sucked in England. Couldn't happen to a better bunch of pricks. Um, <laughs> all right, well, so you play one more game in 2014 for the Knights against the Warriors, and that wraps up your NRL career. But plenty of people will be disappointed with the two games. But, you know, I read an article you did with New South Wales Rugby League a while back. You, you, you know, you're very happy with those two. You know, you've achieved a childhood dream. But then those two games progress you to a contract with whole KR was it two year contract initially three three year okay so yeah, how does how years. does how does it go from you finishing the year with the Knights to ending up in Hull um I knew uh, halfway through 2014 that it was going to be my last at Newcastle yep. I didn't even attempt to uh, this was after Wayne had announced that he was leaving to go to Brisbane. I didn't even attempt to to talk to Stoney and ask about next year. I just thought, you know, I've had three years. I think it's time uh, to move on. You know, plus I had all these young outside backs coming through, like Mamo and then Matautiers and yep. good juniors coming through too. So I was like, yeah, it's time. Um, but that year I was playing with Michael Dobson and... Clint Newton, and, um, you know, they played over there for Hulk AR. And I think their, their chairman or CEO came over for a couple of weeks doing a bit of scouting, and he asked them about me and, you know, um, put the feelers out there, I guess. And I think it was late late July, maybe early August, um, the contract come through for three years. I'm thinking, wow, this is good. But there's a catch. You know, I've got 24 hours to, to sign it, make Jesus. my decision. Because yeah. otherwise they can move on. And I was just like, oh, Jesus. So that that 24-hour period was, oh, it was probably the worst, like, just to, to talk to everybody and yeah. especially, you know, the missus, yeah. um, how she'd take it. But, you know, we, we worked it out and... Uh, 
I don't regret that decision yeah. at all. It was unreal time. Who did I'm you just consult? looking at your games? Yeah, sorry. Go. Who did you consult on your with the decision? So I rang Rip Taylor. Yep. Because I was going to go back to Long mm. the next year um, and play play part time cup, but go to full time like study at university. Yep. So I thought, you know, I can I can balance the both. That'd be great. So I spoke to him, I spoke to Mitch Williams, um, obviously my parents, obviously my girlfriend, and I spoke to my old boss as well, like, um, he's, oh, I'm throwing a number out there, but I think he's about in his late 60s now, and when I was a, a teenager doing an apprenticeship, he was kind of a good, a good bit of wisdom to bounce off. Um, so I rang him as well and got his thoughts on it and, um, and they you know all everyone said you know it's a great opportunity and you'd be pretty you might regret it if you don't take it so give it a shot Steve you want to go I'm just looking at your record and we'll go into this deep but you played a lot of big games just like yeah. obviously the run maybe yeah, well, the run to the Challenge Cup final. You obviously had a few hairy moments in the Super Eights as well, a couple of times. Yeah. But there was there's lots of lots of big games there in in your career in England, which I'm sure we're going to touch on now. But I didn't. I, I as horrible as this may sound, I didn't really wasn't aware of just how good your record was in England. Yeah, and, and like um... he doesn't pay for pints in Hull, mate. When he goes back, <laughs> drinks for free. That's why we're all going back with him when when the oh, cups over there. We're all going back. World Cup. I'm going to try and get a gig as the Italian media manager. Mate, get into it. <laughs> if, if I'm if I'm in the World Cup next year, I'll take you there. Yeah, I promise you. But um, yeah, well, those big games that you mentioned, Hull KR is stereotypically not a big game club. Like you think a big game, big games over there. And you think of Leeds, Wigan, St Helens. Like they're the big yeah. three. Um, so when we went over there, we, we had a, a new batch of Aussie fellas. So we all landed at the same time. So it was myself, Albert Kelly, Bobby Blair, Terry Campisi, Mitch Allgood. And then we, we got in like Tony Pulitua and Dane Tills halfway through the seasons. And, um, you know, we had a good connection, all us Aussie fellas and, um, the club as well, like they, they had bought up heaps. They had a massive clear out and they brought in heaps of like local English fellas into that team as well. So, um, you know, those big games were, you know, for the fans, it, it was good for them because they, they hadn't experienced those sorts of big games for quite a while. And, um, yeah, like you said, we did go on quite a bit of, bit of a run to Challenge Cup. So what tell it. Four tries against Bradford. Four me. In your five. first challenge. Against Bradford, four tries in your Challenge Cup debut. Yeah, yeah. No, I um, I really penciled in those Challenge Cup games um, as a highlight of the season because, like, when you think about it, you only have to win four games to make a grand final, and like, it's it's four games, you know. Like, just put everything into that basket for those four games, and you can play a grand final essentially. So those were the games that I really wanted to just raise the bar in and play well in, and, and I did. I, I think I, you know, I played well in all those games except for the final, of course. <laughs> we won't mention the final. Don't worry about that little guy. Please but tell, don't. Tell oh. us, tell us about, uh, like you know, for me, I'm not the most avid Super League man just because I live and breathe NRL throughout the year, and that's just all my energy can take. But what you know. Not so much what is it, but how important is it in the Super League and or you know in, in the UK? What was life like after you win that semi? Go back, you know, you know, win that game and then go to the to the Challenge Cup. Was it Wembley? Was it the the final? Is that where? Yeah. It's at? Yeah. So yeah. you know, playing at a you know a massive venue like Wembley. Explain the whole Challenge Cup experience to to people like me and people who wouldn't know about it. It's it's got so much history behind it, and it is. I think it's the cup that the real rugby league, like I hope I'm not um, speaking out of turn here, but I think it's the cup that the the real rugby league 
Northern England supporters really want to win is that Challenge Cup. So we, we after we beat Wigan um, in like an early round game, you know, that was a massive upset. Um, that was actually five years ago today. I saw on um, Twitter. Oh, yeah? So, yeah, that, that was huge. As soon as we won that game, we sort of thought, holy shit, you know, we could, we could really go on a run here because then we're into the quarterfinals. We drew Catalan at home, which was good because they'd have to travel for it. So we beat them and then we're into a semifinal. And um, that semifinal day was so loud. It was at Leeds, at Headingley. And, you know, as soon as we won, you know, people in the stands, they were crying. They were literally in tears because it's been 30 years since they've been to Wembley. And, um, you know, that night was huge. Uh, <laughs> I could imagine. Walking, you know, walking in at 6 a.m. <laughs> um, you know, oh, it was... You know, you, you hear these stories about, you know, like when you watch things on TV, like the superstar athletes, like in America and all that. Like, seriously, just for that night, we were superstars. It was ridiculous. Yeah. yeah but it would have been heaps better if we won the bloody thing. So, <laughs> so how long did you play between in each game? So... Like you, you, yeah. you won that semi, and then how long till the final? Yeah, it varies. So probably throughout the year, it's between it's about six weeks. Okay, um, four to six weeks, and the difference between the semi and the final is four weeks. Okay. So the shit thing is, you win that semi final, but then you got three games to play in between. Yeah, You're thinking to yourself, torture. "Oh, I don't want to lose. Yeah, or I don't want to get injured." Like, yeah. And we were playing those middle eight games, and they were a punish. And like, we we had to win in order to stay up in Super League. So that was another thing we were stressing about. So yeah, it was a really weird four week period from the semi to the final. Yeah. Yeah. So explain, explain. Well, we don't have to go into the game because we, we, I think we know. I've done my research, and I'm sure you don't want to relive it. But explain the experience of the whole Challenge Cup final. You know, like people talk about Grand Final week here. You know, like you're you're a team in that. You've got a cop. You know, yeah. media throughout the week. You got to do Grand Final breakfast. You got to do all this sort of stuff. Is that what it's like over there for that final? You've got like a full week lead up and all media and you know breakfast and functions and. <sighs> Yeah, so I think on the Monday it's straight into the media side of things. We, you know, about six of us had to go to Sheffield, you know, along with the, the Leeds players and like do the, the media rounds, the photography with the cup and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then I think on the Wednesday, or, no, the Thursday, you know, you make your way down to London uh, in the, on the bus. You know, it's a good four-hour trip uh, down there. So as soon as, you get to, as soon as you get to London, it's it's sort of just, you know, chilling out in your hotel room, go to training. Um, you know, all the media stuff was probably earlier in the week. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe the coaches and all that sort of stuff had more to do mm. later on. But, um, yeah, like when, you, when you're pulling up in the bus – to Wembley, there's there's a there's a long uh, walkway called Wembley Way, and everyone's just walking along down there to to the stadium. You know, all singing and chanting in the bars. Um, you know, and it, it's a big celebration. Um, you know, even even fans of rugby league who aren't fans of whoever's playing on the day, they still go because. Okay. It's a big celebration, you know what I mean? So I went the two times I lived over there. It's nuts. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's really it's a, it's an amazing thing. It's what one question on the final. Sure. We won't relive it blow for blow, but what what went wrong? <laughs> I know a lot of things obviously with the score line, but Yeah. We, we said honestly. the Mitch we talked about grand finals and stuff like that. He played in, yeah. you know how you just get that feeling when you play sport. Like everyone knows it if you've played sport where yeah. I've played footy grand finals and you get out there and you go, oh, yeah, we're gonna win this. I've just got this feeling, you know, like yeah. What, yeah. where did you where did you go, Oh, hold on, this isn't not good? 
Yeah, so the whole week, I thought personally, it it wasn't it wasn't well structured. It wasn't well run because the semi final that we played, we we're playing against Warrington, and and they were mad favourites to win that game. Mm. But we sort of did everything right leading up to that game. Our captain's run was sweet. You know, we had the motiv- motivational video before it, and we're thinking, we are fucking on here. We cannot lose. And that was, I've only ever felt that twice before, yep. before a game where we're going to win this. And that was that game, and that was the 09 uh, Newcastle Grand Final, you know, yep. back in local comp. Real NRL. Yeah, real NRL. <laughs> uh, so I've only ever felt that feeling twice, but... That week leading up to the final, Leeds played on the Friday. We played on the Sunday. So we were already behind uh, two days. Yeah, I don't like that. See, that's the, if that's the NRL, clubs yeah. blow up. Two yeah. days back up. Like, so what, Friday they play, they got Saturday, Sunday. So you're not coming good to Monday, Tuesday. See, that's yeah. – over here, they, they wouldn't let that fly. Not that yeah. I'm saying, you know, a bit like no, it's an excuse, but it just wouldn't fly over here because of the short yeah. turnaround. Yeah, and that Sunday was an away game yeah. um, on that 3G pitch over at Witness. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually rested eight blokes yeah. for that game, and we and luckily we still won that game. But I think the Monday, I think we're trying to play catch-up, you know, like get as much into the week as we can because we've got two days to catch up behind Leeds. And... You know, we just wanted to tick every box, make sure everything was ticked. But I just thought, less is more, you know, just mm. just focus on what you need to focus on. But Monday was media. Tuesday, I can't remember what we did. But yeah, too, you think you did too, too much training and stuff. Like, it's almost at that. Oh. Like, how far is this into the season? Are you halfway to near the end, middle? Late August. Late August. Okay. So it's, it's almost yeah. like you get to points where, like, you can see even NRL coaches now, they, like, almost let it out that, it's like, oh, we probably won't even train. You know, like we no. might have a captain's run. So, like, you almost could have been in that situation where you, you sort of have recovery the, the Monday, yeah. maybe do a few things on a Tuesday or Wednesday, and then you almost yeah. do one or two small light training sessions and that's it. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. So it was, kind of, it was kind of the opposite. Like, instead of doing recovery on the Monday, like, we were straight into, into training. Like, yeah, I was no. just thinking, no, no, I was no. thinking, oh, no. And then Thursday... I think we we had training again. Say goodbye to the fans. We're on the bus for four hours on the way to, down to London. Friday was our captain's run, and we we turned up this schmick rugby um, field um, just outside of London. <laughs> we're thinking, oh, this is this is a good ground to do captain's run. And we go and we go and the um, the groundskeeper goes, no, 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 you're you're on that field. And we look over, and it was a dead set cow paddock. <laughs> we're looking at, oh, I was just looking at Dane Tills. He's just, he's, he's laughing. He just shook his head. He's going, oh, no. And it was so windy and just dropped ball, everything like that. And I was just thinking, no, nah, okay. I've heard stories where shit captain's runs can kind of lead into like a yeah, good yeah. game day. But I woke up Saturday morning, I was thinking, no, nah, we're screwed. Yeah. I just thought, oh, no. Uh, the worst feeling, and yeah, obviously it came true. We'll save we'll save you for some bad dreams tonight. We won't keep going into the <laughs> horrors. We did that to poor Mitch about the two grand finals he's lost. It was it was dark times for him. But uh, tell us tell us about the whole derby. That's yeah. That's what you know. Like, I, know <laughs> I know we have them here where you know Roosters play South, but it strikes me that this is like a city divide. You know, there's eight teams in Sydney or whatever it is now. Yeah, there's yeah. More than eight, sorry. But, there's, you know, this strikes me as a city's at war even, you know, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's nothing Nothing compares to that derby. Like, um, they section off the crowd like they do in the football, mm. like in the soccer over there, because they can get pretty hairy. But um, there's always singing and... Um, it's so loud, man. It's just, it's it's the best, honestly. Did like, you have a song about you? Did you get a song? Yeah, I was about to ask the same yeah. question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. I might be wrong. You know what? You might have to hit the... Uh, 
We'll hit YouTube like and find forum. out. Yeah, a we'll have a look. Don't worry. Something. We'll play it over the we'll play it over the pod. But so yeah. Steve, you were, you were saying before because I don't understand how less versus how okay. Is it Hull East versus West, Steve? Is that how it rolls? Yeah, it's basically a West. I can never. I think I think Hull FC is the East. And Hull KR. Oh, it's the other way around, is it? The other way around, yeah, yeah. I have no idea. I've, I've only been there once, okay? <laughs> so, so, t- so what's, you know, I think you said you won your first one and then you lost. Yeah. How many others did you play in? Two? Like, how many how many der- derbies did they have a year? One? You only get one round where you play Hull or you play uh, twice? No, you, you play you play three times. Jeez. So you play, you play home away and then magic round. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So the first one I played in, it was at their stadium, mm-hmm. so 20,000, um, you know, everyone booing you when you're on the sideline, <laughs> kicking a goal. Sick. Love it. Yeah. Um, that was mad. So Wait, we won why, that why wouldn't you be back in lolly legs? We'll, go, we'll talk about this later. Remember, old mate from Balmain screaming at <laughs> <out> the <thing. laughs> some, some drunk from Balmain screaming at you, but then you got 20. What about the uh, the, the yin and yang? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. No, just it's when you can hear one person, that's when you're in trouble. <laughs> Would you? Oh, I know, we'll talk about it after. I don't want to dive into it now. Yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah, massive. So you won your first one, right? And then. Yeah. Damn, did you did you play in sixteen? Did you play? In, was it? Fi- sorry, fifteen. What did you get? Sixteen. Did you yeah. play it in sixteen or not? So I played in three in yeah. twenty fifteen, and I played in two of them in yeah. twenty sixteen. So I played five all up. Yeah. Plus. Plus, you play a um, a friendly, which is a trial game. Yeah. Um, to start the year off. Yeah. And they and that'll draw ten thousand people. Yeah, it's massive. Okay, you know, that, that was my that was my first <laughs> game in a, in a whole shirt. Yeah, whole cow shirt <clears throat> was a, a it was a friendly against FC again in ten, in front of ten thousand people. <laughs> I'm thinking this is mental. It's no <laughs> Maury Breen Oval, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> <about it. laughs> It's but, really um, different to having like five people at Leichhardt over Oval yelling volley leagues. Some drunk people may play in a single. Um, yeah. What about <laughs> off the field? What's what's life like in Hull? And like, did you did your missus go over with you? Yeah. Or did she so stay back? I went over, um, get set up with the apartment, the car, and all that sort of stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, she came over a few months a few months later because I had to actually duck back to Australia to to go to my brother's wedding to be my to be the best man my brother's wedding so i missed a uh, a weekend of footy there but when i came back to australia she came back over with me to uh, england so yep. yeah to start off with she probably was a bit uh, i don't know but as soon as she got into the local gym and the, the cafe scene like you know like she made friends like that and you know she loved it you know she was friends with um, my teammates, you know, wives and girlfriends as well. So it was a really good, um, good community sort of yep. deal over there, especially amongst the Aussie fellas. Yeah. Could you understand anyone there? I struggle a bit with that. <laughs> Don't I say H, do you? Go pop, have part, go home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a very strong accent and it's, it's, it's whenever I hear it, I just think, ah, oh, like it, it's, <laughs> It, it takes me back. It's the best. I, I, I really liked it. I well, you call Mantelato? Cool. Mantelato. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can't yeah. say latte. I've got a, I've got a friend who goes, La- latte. It's like, I'm sure it's latte. <laughs> I imagine you'd be getting, just Mantelato. That's it, yeah. And their banter is just second to none. Like, no one, it is, like, I think, yeah, the banter over here, like, it doesn't compare to over there. Over there, no one's safe, honestly. Like in group chats, like get ready. <laughs> so it's what good. what happened in your in, in so you were three year deal, so you were what, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen? Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Okay. And so when did you come back back over here to for wine? Two thousand seventeen? Yeah. Yeah. So, what, so at, yeah, go. Okay. at the end of the sixteen season we got relegated. Yeah. Yeah. So did you so, so what happens with that? Do they say to you do you want to stay or do they they can't afford you like what happens with that yeah um basically your contract is void yeah and it's up to the club if they want to offer you another one Mm. um and well 
I got called into the office two days after we lost. This was the day after Mad Monday. Yeah. So it been in I was a good pretty, state, yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty tired and depressed, you know, on the come down. But, um, you know, I got offered to stay, which was great, but had a fraction of the cost and I was just, I didn't want to, as much as I wanted to stay, I couldn't justify another year away of like, yeah, um, being separated from my girlfriend for a couple of months here and there, yeah. and um, yeah, for less money and playing in a lower division. You know, I was going to England to play Super League. Um, obviously, it it ended, so I thought, well, maybe it's time to head back home anyway. So, no other offers from Super League clubs or anything like that. Like, did you put feelers out? Or <sighs> well, it's hard because it's October and everyone's already got their squad sorted. Oh, okay, yeah. So, and if you're asking for the money you want, you know you won't get it. Yeah, okay. You can play Super League on match payments, but it's no way to survive. <laughs> well, the bright side, you got to go back some good weather. Well, yeah. that's true. Yeah, yeah, but I, I did, I did. Um, See, I like know, the cold. Get... I can handle it, mate. I don't care how cold it is. Oh, mate, I used to think I so too. as well, and then I lived through bloody cold in in. Mate, I got I, I got built-in protection, mate. A layer of fat that just keeps me go me sweet. <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually, I don't mind the cold as well, yeah. but I actually enjoyed the um, the English summer. Oh, it, that is like, sweet. Like, they have, there's always a festival festival on somewhere, and sunrise is 3.30, 4 a.m. in the morning, and sunset's oh, 10.30. Yeah, it's nuts, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. seriously, it's nuts. It's but then yeah, in the winter, it's it, it bloody it, the sun goes down at three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. You're like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, it's 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 nine till three daytime in the winter. But yeah, those summer months, like you play a Friday night game, and the sun is still up there. You know, it doesn't set till probably full time. So that was pretty cool. Um, there was always something to do, and yeah, I got. Did, I got did travel much withdrawals. from there? Like you know, obviously you you know everything's an hour away, different country. Yeah. Too much travelling with the with the missus or anything like that. Well, always we, we we planned to do a bit of travel, but in that first year because we played Challenge Cup all the way up to the final, mm. we didn't get any weekends off. Yeah, okay. You're always playing footy, so if you get knocked down the Challenge Cup in April, you've got a you've got a free weekend every four to six weeks. You know, just yeah, to. Right. Um, but, twenty sixteen. Ducked off to Spain for a few nights. Ibiza? Uh, you go Ibiza? Yeah, no, I didn't go to Ibiza. <laughs> nah. Did you play at this Stard? Stard, what is it? Stard Fra- yeah. de France or something? Yeah. No, um, nah, I didn't. Wait, is that the Catalan home ground? Yeah, I think yeah. Gilbert Brutus or something? Yeah, I did. Yeah, my first year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was um, that was good. good trip. Mate, so not I mean, a bad part of the world there. <laughs> Down no. that, that way, we have really. Yeah, my France. wife's got realised we stay. They live in Saint Tropez and they live right on the water in Saint Tropez. Very, very, very nice house, mate. Yeah. I could uh, s- slot up there once I retire. <laughs> once I, once this podcast makes a million dollars and I pay you blokes all back for your time, and then we can go move over there and just broadcast from Saint Tropez all year. So we're going to 2007, and you find yourself back with Wyong. Um, Mitch said because I sort of look back and I, you know, I went to the game actually, but I was I was working at the NRL, but I went up to watch it. Um, you broke your arm during the season. When, when did you break your arm yeah. during that 2017 season? Uh, I think it was uh, mid-July. Um, yeah, it was just like one of those accidents in a game, like yep. like a like a weird collision. I was freaking filthy too. Like as soon as I as soon as I got whacked, I hear it crack like a tree branch. Mm. I'm laying there on the ground going, oh, shit. You know, like, I've, I'm thinking to myself, I've got uni on Monday. I, I can't write because it's my right arm. And then I'm thinking, oh, you know, World Cup, I won't be fit for that either. So I'm in the dressing shed fighting demons afterwards and got the, got the plates put in it that week. And, um, yeah, missed out on that grand final, unfortunately. What was it like sitting on the sideline? Would you have been, would you have been marking May Casivo too? Um, Where was he right? Were you left or you were right? Were you there? No, I was left. left. Yeah, I would have been. So been I would have been marking him. Yeah, but obviously with the play, the players that we had fit and healthy, 
if, if I was going to get a run, I don't know, but... Mate, um, when you turn yeah. four points into six, Josh, you're an automatic selection. Don't worry about that. Just ask Hazem El Masri. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, Mike Asimo, he had a belt over game. That oh, well, he's special talent. But um, So, to go to 2018, when did you know, like, when did you know, A, why on weren't going around again, and B, did you go, that's probably me? Like, we spoke to Mitch. Mitch sort of said... He didn't really have the get up and go. Not the get up and go, but he just goes. You know, he was at a certain age. He didn't really want to go try and forge his way to another New South Wales Cup club. Did you have the yeah. same sort of feelings? So, well, we found out early 2018. Like, it would have been either before the year or early rounds. So that kind of sucked because it put a bit of a, a downer on the season. But. Um, I probably knew that that was it for me. Um, but then last year, 2019, when I was playing local footy, after the first couple of rounds, I was like, I, I'm not enjoying this at all. Um, you know, the standard was quite different. And, you know, I thought I'd probably still had a bit more juice in the tank. Um, I had a chat with Rory Costjason at Newcastle. And because um, they, were, they were down a couple of outside backs and, you know, a bit of experience. They were quite a young cup team. And um, he was asking if I was keen to go up there um, for the remainder of the 2019 season. I was like, I was really keen, but I was sort of on the... F- I, I would have gone if uh, Country Rugby League and New South Wales Rugby League could have made a... <laughs> Probably would have maybe. been a bit easier now, now they won body, but well, maybe yeah. not so easy back then. Basically, my argument was, okay, if I'm not chosen in the top 17 for the Cup that week, I'll be able to come back and play for a while on the but coast. No, sometimes rugby league doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I'd have to play for a Newcastle Castle local rugby league team. Side. Yeah, no. So um, that sort of put the pin in that balloon for me, but I was kind of, I was really keen to go back to Newcastle because I enjoyed my time at Newcastle I thought it was unreal and um, you know Rory he's my age you know mm. we, we played against each other in our juniors so he cup store war too I he's captain of the residence for a couple of years as well Rory oh like, yeah back in the early years yeah, yeah back in the earlier years yeah I think he was yes. captain when I think it was 2010 maybe 2009 he's the teams where they had like Gareth Widdop Jesse Bromwich all these players you know oh, in yeah. tens, two, <laughs> there was about 10 internationals in it <laughs> well, we, we skipped over. We skipped over the 2017 World Cup. We may as well just go and review. Any any good stories from that that tour? Um, you have to play in Cairns or somewhere awfully hot oh from memory. Oh my god! Yeah, so we played we played a warm up game against Tonga. Mm. Um, you know that was when they started getting, getting all their good players. Yeah, we only got beat 16-6, so we're pretty happy with that. Um, but yeah, that that campaign was a bit different because we're in Australia. Yeah, and it's fun. To be honest, it, it it isn't like when you're in England. Like, <laughs> there's, there's, there's no there's no there's no rules. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I say no rules, I'm not saying like He's breaking drunk the whole time. Yeah, yeah, breaking rules, but like I just think society over there is a lot more lenient than what it is yeah, here anyway. Yeah, so, oh, mate, nanny stayed over here. Yeah, so. It was, it was kind of hard, um, plus obviously all the camp, like all the local, um, what do you call it, media about it. But mm. we, we lost that first game and we really shouldn't have. Yeah. Um, it was in a Cairns in 40 degree heat. It was ridiculous. <laughs> I covered it too, mate. It just looks oh. so like it's Ireland. Was, I, Scott, I was it Scotland? That. Yeah. Ireland, Ireland. okay, Ireland. 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 It was, I remember yeah. that. I remember watching that. And Jack Johns, was it Jack Johns? One of May John's sons got injured early on. I was yeah. watching from England. Yeah, he broke his arm. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that sort of ruined our campaign. And um, we, had, we had a big win against USA the week after up in Townsville. But um, And then we had Fiji down in Canberra the weekend after. Mm. And that was a quite a quite a fiery match, that one. That was... <laughs> That was good fun, actually. Um, all right, Mate, we'll, yeah, guys. What there. about twenty twenty one? Are you surely your diet? But he's keen. He said before he's frothing. I, I'm, I'm keen. Um, who are you going to mark up? Who would you be marking up against? Oh, <laughs> Blake Ferguson. I don't know. 
Jeez. They're our wingers. But, oh, I'll be Val Holmes or someone. Money Holmes, he'll step yeah. straight back into the yeah. Australian team. Well, it yeah. won't be Josh Adokar, according to Mal Meninga. Mal's <sighs> put a big line through him, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got 18 months to improve my strength, my speed, and my toughness. So. Is that, have you been in contact with the the uh, Italian authorities? Like, uh, Are they watching yeah. you? Do you hear from them? Do well, you tell I them spoke, you're keen? Yeah, I spoke to the coach um, about eight weeks ago because we had – we had a, like a team meeting down in Sydney and I couldn't make it because I was, um, you know, three hours away. Mm. So I, um, I gave him a ring just to see how it's all going. I said, look, I'm, I'll put my hand up. You know, I'm dedicating the next 18 months to mm. to tr- wanting to be on that tour because that could, that could be for me, you know, the last... Last hurrah. Yeah, that's it. Though, three like, World Cups, not bad. Not a bad... Uh, uh, yeah, three is better than two, isn't it? It sounds better than two. Mm. So, three, yeah, that, that's the um, that's the cherry on top. But um, mate, we'll start oh, a campaign. Yeah. We're gonna we get a mate. We're gonna start the so you got to get back on social media, mate. You can't delete all your accounts. I was trying to find <laughs> you know, we, to get to DM you, but you got you, you've gone all dark mode. Williams, I'm, reckon, back, on the, I'm back on the Twitter. Back mate, Twitter, mate. No one uses Twitter, mate. Oh, mate, I love Twitter. It's my favorite. Oh it's yeah, you'd love it. Body. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Um, so political. <laughs> Um, well, ask, can I grab you with two more questions, Josh? Yeah, yeah. One is, you're the goal-kicking extraordinaire, 100% at uh, NRL level. What was your secret <laughs> to the goal-kicking? Yeah, walk us through your, your process. Oh. Did you know, Johnny Wilkerson saw, didn't he used to see some old lady sitting on a chair and having a Coke? This was, this was I'm sure there's some story like that that he used really? to visualise someone behind the goalposts. Yeah. He could kick. No, like, I've got nothing. I just, honestly, I practised that much that it just sort of became a bit... Um, robotic, uh, I guess. Yeah, it's. I, it, I've changed it. I've changed the technique a couple of times because, like, if something sort of not working, I'll just shorten up my step or take an extra step. You know, just just to something like that. But I've only ever changed my style a couple of times, and it's just practice. Honestly, well, how, yeah. many, how many hours a week in your in your cup times or over when you're in the Super League? How many hours a week goal kicking practice? At, at least two. Yeah. At least two, like half hour after every session, maybe. Um, I know. I know. First year of cup, you know, myself and Mitch Williams would be we'd be there for probably about forty five minutes after a session. Hmm. How did Willow go? Kick a ball, all right, or goal kicking? Yeah. Yeah. Nah, oh, I thought what you were saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah so get them little pistons up. <laughs> He's very straight with the way he kicks. It irritates me. He needs to <laughs> come around with a bit more. You know, around the corner a bit more. Yeah. No, I, I love I love goal kicking. It's a weird thing because I um like growing up, not really. I'm not centre of attention kind of a guy. You know, like yep. I'm not the uh, the guy who goes after the accolades, but. I just enjoy goal kicking and the pressure. I like the pressure of it too. Um, you know, sometimes you, you do get the pressure one, sometimes you don't. And that's the way it is. Steve, you got another question, or you want me to roll in these in these little uh, short ones? Oh, I just wanted to ask what he's up to these days. He's talking about uni, and I know I think you do a bit of yeah. personal training. So just tell us what's the uh, what's Josh Mantry up to these days? So. Since I've been back from uh, England, I enrolled into the full-time uh, course teaching, teaching high school maths. So if you need a statistician at NRL, I'm your guy. I can get I can get all your goal kicks from the old stats files, and you can you can just do, play them and just get the kids to add them up two by two. Just go now, watch this and add them up two by two, and just play them all. I, I've even got an Excel spreadsheet of all my stats too, so that's how much of a statistician I am. Oh, you're going better than most of us. <laughs> I um, but now I um, this is my fourth year, and uh, I became a casual accredited teacher just last week so I can teach casually but I, I'm not completely um, qualified so mm. I've still got one more internship to do next term and then I'm done yeah. you're still up the sunny coast or we're going somewhere yeah. else you? Okay. yeah in, on the central coast so got to go to Newcastle a day or yeah. two a week for uni yeah. but um, you know, I'm just at a local high school here on the coast 
working a few days a week and um, yeah, settling in down up here. Now you do have a little cash on the side, but it be the next Harold Nulligan. Daryl Halligan, mate, do the goal kicking advice. Just I take, need to, uh, yeah. Mate, a little bit of cash in here, something the government doesn't know about, mate. Just, yeah, and like, I saw, I saw, was it last year when the Sharks were going shit out for their goal kicking, and I was mate. like, looking for a goal kicking coach, I'm just thinking, oh. It can be your own, you missed 100%. <laughs> <laughs> mate. I would, I'd be milking, I'd be milking that. Oh, just yeah. don't mention it was over two games, just go, 100% kick in the NRL, I'd be <laughs> When we get the merch store up, we'll put, we'll get a photo of him and put Mr. 100% on it and we'll sell it. And you can have half uh, the profits. I've got, got to design my own kicking tee too. Mate, uh, smart, I'm telling you. Just mate. push DH out of the uh, Rebel Sport. And yeah, put... yeah, mate, we'll, we'll go straight to the top. But all right, we might wrap it up there. Thanks heaps for giving us your time. We've gone for nearly 90 minutes and we'll probably let you get to sleep. But um, thanks, Ace, for coming on. I'm sure we'll get you back on. If if you make the team of the decade, we'll get on and have another chat. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right. good. We'll, we'll come back and speak to you when we compile the Italian team of the decade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true. We can do that. Yeah, get all the guests on. LaFranchi. Tedesco, we'll get Tedesco, he's not doing much. We could get heaps of the people who play like random games of them as well. Like Dean Parada. Yeah. And Orazio and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, there's a few of them. There's a few of them. All you right. Know, Good luck for right. good luck for this year. I don't know if, what's happening with country footy. No update or anything like that. Do you know? Oh, country footy's coming back. Is apparently. it? It is, but only if selected teams are choosing to actually go through with it. So. So what are what? Wyong doing? Uh, they're not know. doing it. I don't know. I read a story that the Bears are going to try and get into the real NRL. Uh, there's a rumor the Bear, I don't. I can't remember if it was the Seti Coast or the real NRL. There's a rumor going around that the Bears could be doing one of those comps. I don't know whether it's true uh, or not. Whether it was just some crap I read on some kind of social media thing, but I heard I've heard a rumor that the Bears were trying to get into a country comp. Wow. Well, yeah, maybe the extra cash there for if Warren aren't playing. You need a manager. Steve's available. We can just start writing. We can just start pumping the news out of how good you're going. If, we can, get, if you want the Josh Manolato biography, I'm happy to ghost write it for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mate, he's a very good writer, Steve. Work for Rugby League Week, mate. Don't worry about it. All right, mate. Thanks, Ace, for coming on. Um, we'll chat to you soon. Thanks, guys. Cheers, mate. Cheers.